Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. It's 32619. Well, many of you have written me about precious metals. Is this the start of something big or are we going to go back to the future, meaning back to the past over the past seven, eight years and trail of tears, if you will? Frankly, I'm not the expert on this. Yes, I watch it closely. I've been involved in it uh, for years, but there are people out there that know a lot more than myself. Hey, and before we get started, if you got any questions or comments for the people you're about to hear from and the people you're about to hear from, David Morgan, the morganreport.com and Chris Vermeulen, the technical traders.com, or you can find him at the golden oil guy.com. Any questions, KL at Kerry Lutz.com. So first, uh, let me welcome you guys on. David, it's great to talk with you again. Chris, great to have you on and welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show, Kerry. Appreciate it, Kerry. Thank you. So my first question is, uh, in order to figure out where you are, you kind of need to know where we've been. So the first question is, where are we in the cycle right now? And Chris, you're the cycle guy. What's your take on where the precious metal cycle is right now? Well, yeah, looking at uh, precious metals, if we're focusing on gold, I feel as though, you know, we're coming out of a, a bottoming in a, in a cycle. I think we've seen gold, silver, um, even platinum, more or less, carving out a big bottom really since the top in 2011. And, you know, we're on the second half of a what I call a stage one kind of basing formation. The, the market's been slowly recovering and starting to, to move higher. It's building a base, but really gold is, has been stuck under a really clear level, which is around $1,400 per ounce, uh, really since 2013. And we're coming up and we've been testing that, really tested it in 2016, tested it near uh, 2017, early in 2018. And here we are kind of back up to this level again, and we're seeing a series of uh, uh, higher lows in gold. And based on the cycles and really kind of sentiment, I think there there's going to be a time here where we see gold break 1400 and we're going to start another upward cycle here in gold which could run to 1750 i think very quickly interesting and yeah it's, it's certainly looking a lot like that david what's your take on where we're at now and how we got here well i'll take maybe a little broader brush approach i mean gold was like the go-to investment it was up year over year for 11 years silver was like the best commodity you could invest in for several years in a row but as, as chris said we peaked in 2011. i look at it from uh the perspective that we had our first real run from you know i'll use silver instead of gold uh, around the five sub five dollar level all the way up to 21. I called that peak so did Robert Prechter. Prechter said that's it. I said no it's not and then we got down to nine nine ish really during the financial crisis of 2008. It was a V bottom which are a lot easier to handle than these long ones we're experiencing now. We got a V bottom at nine it went from nine basically up to 50. I called that top and then I said, oh, we probably have a couple years, maybe, I don't even think I said maybe three, I'll be honest, I think I said about two. Obviously wrong, it's taken a long time. And we have one more leg up as far as I'm concerned. I think it's going to be the, the mother of all legs up. And, you know, I agree with Chris. I think uh, we're going to have a good year. I don't know. I don't have a target price this year. Uh, I think we'd hit 1400 uh, in gold. And silver's been lagging. It'll follow gold this year. But you see the biggest leg up uh, probably within the next few years. And I think that that's the one you really want to be on. So that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So we're about to approach this leg. We've seen, obviously, gold, gold overperformed, precious metals overperformed for close to 12 years. So 12-year bull, as we know, whether it's in metals, stock market, that's a long time. And probably there's going to be some movement on the opposite way to kind of level it out or, or to, I guess, really, you know, what goes up must uh, come down, whether it's Bitcoin, precious metals, stocks, et cetera. Chris, so as far as the cycle, and I know you pay a lot of attention to cycles, what particular things are you really 
focusing in on that that could really be a major indicator of what's ahead? Um, yeah, well, depending on the time frame, right? Every, everyone listening probably has a, a different time frame, and I I like the shorter time frame just because it creates more action and and trading. So, depending on what you're looking at, I mean, I like I focus mostly on volume and sentiment and uh, chart patterns, and that's kind of my real kind of go to. I, I can look at a chart and see opportunities. And if we're looking at, uh, for example, the daily chart, and and you zoom back, I feel as though gold itself. Uh, for a swing trader uh, looking forward, you know, a month or a few months uh, is very similar to what we saw last year during May and June, where we had a rally up to resistance near this 1400 this, or this 1380 level. And then it, it broke down and created what looks to be a, a broken limb or a, or a bear flag. And that's right where we're at with gold right now. So looking just strictly on kind of where price has been going, accumulation, distribution, volume, um, it looks as though gold is possibly topped out uh, in a, as a swing trader yesterday, and we could see it head all the way down to around the 1260, maybe even the 1240 area going forward. So, you know, I, I focus a lot on the pricing, and um, and it really de- just depends on on the time frame that we're looking at. You and I have talked about a couple times, Kerry, that long term, uh, if we were to look at gold during different stages going forward a few months, I think gold will do well uh, later this year. But if we go into a full market recession, we see the equities markets crash, we see forced liquidation and margin calls, we could very much so see gold have a nice run early this year. Year, but end up selling off with a bear market potentially late this year or next year and and actually making some new multi-year lows for gold, at which point I think a couple of years from now, gold could have an amazing opportunity or precious metals, just like what David was saying, for what I think could be the, a major, major leg up. We're talking potentially, you know, 5,000 plus in gold. So, all depends on your time frame. You know, I'm bearish short term, intermediate this year. I'm more bullish, and uh, longer term, I'm bearish, and looking forward. You know, uh, four or five years from now, extremely bullish. So it really depends on who's who, what kind of analysis you're looking at in your time frame. Mm-hmm. And 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 David, so you look at cycles to to some extent. I know. In fact, we all look at cycles. Uh, some of us. A little closer than others. What what do you see factors right now that you really believe are going to be key to the future coming advance? Well, it's really sentiment. It's market psychology. It's not any you know math equation. Uh, I just want to add on to what Chris said. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of my um, you know people that uh, are members of our, our paid service, and then of course a lot of people that just listen to the interviews like this and are on the Free Morgan Report, and many of them are concerned that there will be you know uh, another you know washout <clears throat> to the downside. I can't rule that out. Looking at the chart, the way I look at it, like twelve eighty in gold is kind of my worrisome point. If we got below that, then of course I would put on alert to all our paid people and let them know. Uh, but I have told my folks if they've got big positions to not really worry too much until we get to that level. Or if you want to think ahead, use that level as a protection level. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving onward, uh, just to reiterate, I think, you know, we do see a, a huge move at some point in the future. And I like what Chris said, you know, I mean, we do trade here. I'm more of a position trader. I like volume. It's the number one thing as far as I'm concerned. And I use uh, horizontal lines, not channel formations. I was taught by one of the best and I've studied this stuff for years, probably even longer than Chris. So, but I don't like to trade very often because I, it, it doesn't work for my followers are for me. I'm not that good on swing trading. I'm not bad at it, but I travel too much. So I like these position trades where if we go back to 2016 and use AG, first Majestic, we got in about two and a half and I got out in September. I think it was at something like 14, 15. So, you know, we made like 700% and, and silver uh, rallied that year. And I was wrong again. I thought that was the end of the bear market in the metals and we were on our way and it was proven wrong in 2017 and 18 that we still had some more backing and filling to do so i'll turn it back over to you guys yeah well you know as uh, as yogi Berra said uh, prediction is very difficult uh, especially about the future so 
Um, you know, I know uh, we had a little pre-call discussion about interest rates. We aren't going to get too deep into the weeds. But, David, you're talking about John Williams' calculation of what you would need in terms of the real rate of interest in order to not lose money in paper investments, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah, just to address it briefly, I mean, if you go back to the, you know, first bull market that I'm old enough to have lived through and participated in a rather significant way, the official inflation rate was calculated pretty accurately. And at the time of the peak in gold, it was running around 12 or 13%. Volcker saw the problem and took immediate action and did something that uh, to this day is rather astonishing and pushed up basically the short-term yield on a T-bill at 17 and a half, 18. He got in almost a 20% range for uh, interest-bearing securities from the U.S. government. So that was a, like a 5% spread above the real inflation rate. So tons of money left the gold market and moved into the bond market and basically killed inflation. And it killed it for a long time. Today, going by John Williams, if you're looking at let's say 8% inflation. I, I agree with John. I, you know, I have to go shopping. I shop at restaurants, all that stuff. I mean, it is not this, we can't get to 2% that the Fed talks about. I digress when they come back. So real inflation, let's call it five. I don't care. It's well above the two that the target Fed has. And so to get real return, you'd have to push interest rates up to, let's say, seven, eight, nine, whatever. That cannot happen this time. You'd absolutely collapse the economy in my study view because it would cause the interest on the national debt to be so much higher that the uh, your credit card rate would be so much higher to pay back your interest on what's already borrowed by the U.S. government. It basically could not be done. So we're in a rock and a hard place. There's really not much the Fed can do. And and they cannot use that tool this time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. Uh, if the rates went up to 20 percent, what would happen to the U.S. economy, the world economy, for that matter? Uh, we just heard the Fed and something we should talk about um, just said no more interest rate increases for the rest of the year. Uh, I know that's like outside of technical realm. It's more fundamentals, Chris. But what's your take on it? Uh, it, it should be an indicator of something going on deeper in the economy than uh, than we see in the papers. Yeah, well, obviously, if they're scared to raise rates, they they see a black cloud kind of looming and they see weakness. And I mean, uh, when you see interest rates kind of go inverse, it doesn't mean it's a bear market is coming. I think in most cases we see the markets rally actually from this point for several more months, uh, 12, 24, even 30 months. If you go back in time and look at all the past times we've seen rates go inverted, uh, it doesn't mean a bear market is actually just around the corner. It, in most cases, it's actually still a long ways out. So, um, it's it's an early warning sign of things are getting weak. I mean, they're they're worried to raise rates because the credit, uh, uh, just the credit market. Um, you know, to me, I, it's just an early warning sign, and it really doesn't change a whole lot, in my opinion, uh, in terms of how I'm trading. But um, it is just another notch in the belt, just saying, okay, we're we're progressing through this potential mega bear market, and eventually, you know, the music's going to stop. The music's going to stop and the uh, chairs are, everybody's going to be looking for a chair, right? And uh, who's going to get it? Uh, who's going to sit down? So I guess uh, I had some other questions, but assuming that Chris is right, David, what's going to be the indication? How are we going to know? Is there going to be some glaring uh, signal given to those in the know saying, uh-oh, this, this is it? time to uh, abandon ship and and you know is there is there a way to know this or do you just have to get ready for it being pretty confident that it's going to happen either way well i'm a big fan of richard russell the late great richard russell and he was pretty famous for letting the market 
do the talking and I've, I've tried to follow suit there. I think, you know, where I would get convinced if the market did a 20% drop, not necessarily in a day or a week or even a month, but I think in a short time frame, relatively short time frame, that's pretty much by conventional wisdom, a bear market. So that's what I would have to see to convince myself. I think, you know, Chris makes a great point that, you know, I'm already writing the next month's report. It's going to be due here April 1st. And we're convinced that we're going to go in the recession based on the uh, yield curve inverting and a lot of other indicators with this retail and everything else, the global economy slowing that can be easily proven even with the mainstream financial press. So I would look for that. I would look for a 20% degradation in the in the S&P 500 and that would convince me. But as far as there's a spark or something, you know, the only thing that comes to mind that was a pretty good indicator and I even don't like to voice it. It would be, you know, some anomaly along the either cyber war or physical war in the Middle East or somewhere else that was significant, unexpected, bang, oh my goodness, it happened and it was you know, significant enough to take the markets down. But again, it'd still be the market coming down, the you know, S&P 500 basically. The global markets are important as well, of course, but my point being that where would I be convinced that we're on our way down? That's what it would take. The market would have to tell me. Yeah. So, so there's no billboards, but Chris, so you spend a lot of your time trying to figure out where it's going to head and what would be the biggest indicator to you that something was afoot? In terms of the stock market going into a bear market? Yeah, and the economy in general, or maybe we're there already, who knows? But but there's one th- if there's one thing that you look at every day when you wake up to say what's going on, what would it be? Yeah, well, I... I'm- Pretty much like David, I let I let the charts do all the talking, and you know it's you look at the long term charts. I look at the the monthly and weekly charts all the time, and you know you go back in time, and if you look at the current market of what happened, uh, really in um, December this year, the big crash in the market. Uh, according to my analysis and the way I see it is we're we're in potentially a giant bear trap right now where the S&P 500 broke down below the 2008 lows. Uh, Dow broke down or uh, the um, small caps, uh, transportation index, kind of the, the leaders, they all broke those levels. Now, they've all had this huge V-shaped recovery. And the big question is, does this recovery have legs or has the damage been done? We've broken down and this is nothing more than a reactionary kind of bounce and the the big market players kind of driving the market up, trying to recover it. Um, You know, we've seen these 15 percent drops in the market happen several times, around 11 times or so in the past. And and 10 out of 11 times we've seen the market sell off again from where we are right, right now to test those lows that we saw in December. So, I mean, there's a very good chance we're going to come back down and test those lows again. Much like in 2015, we saw a huge crash. It recovered with a V-shaped recovery, went back down, tested, and even penetrated those lows temporarily. And if those lows were broken in early 16 and, and held below the the 2015 lows, in my opinion, we would have been in a bear market. But Trump got in. First year mm-hmm. of presidential cycle, always very strong. He did right. all kinds of stuff to help small business, and the market took off. He literally saved the market because we we're we we're a one month away from being technically in a bear market. And now we've kind of had this overextended rally with him in there. Just look at the monthly chart or the, the weekly charts. Uh, the volatility we've seen in 2018 till now in terms of price action, and look at the 27 top and the 2000 mm-hmm. top. I mean, we are in a really high volatility time here, and it feels very toppy to me. So, for us to have a, a go into a bear market, I think we just we do need to see the S and P 500 go all the way back down, break the December lows, which is around 2300. Right. And if we break those and close below those, we're we're well into a bear market, and it could be pretty ugly for a while. Yeah. And yeah, if it breaks it, then all of those algorithms are going to kick in, right? And OMG, look out below. Uh, we've never seen, we've only seen the algorithms buy. We never really see them sell very much. So it's got to be scary. I, we don't talk about politics on the show because this is a family uh, show and uh, there's too much <laughs> pornography in politics. So we avoid it. But 
I, I hesitate to bring it up, but the Mueller non-investigation, as it turned out to be, what does that do for us? Are we agnostic about it, neutral, or is it going to have a profound effect that we're not yet comprehending? And first, I'll go to you, David, on that. Well, you're asking the wrong guy. You know, I <laughs> love politics, but uh, my for my two cents, and that's about what it's worth. I think it clears the air. I think it uh, gives uh, the administration more power to go and take bolder steps, not only in the uh, U.S generally speaking, I won't just say economy across the board, legislative wise and everything else, but on the world stage, I think that there was probably some apprehension of nation states outside of ours that were waiting to see, you know, was this thing real or not? And now that the air is cleared, I think it gives them a lot better standing among others to move forward, whatever that means. And I'm certainly, oh, I'm not a technophobe, but I am concerned with uh, many of the things that are going on on this planet outside of uh, the political scene. <laughs> yeah, as are we all. And Chris, I, I know you're more technically prone, but it is a factor. I don't know how you factor it in, but w what's your take on it? Yeah, I, I think I have the same kind of outlook or, or thoughts as uh, as David does. I, I don't follow it too much, but uh, I mean, it, it yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I have the pretty much the same outlook as David pretty for that. Okay. And it, mine is, I think we have to wait and see what follows. Usually, you know, the other shoe is going to drop. We don't know what it's going to be, but nonetheless, uh, Hey, gold's down a little bit. I, Hey, we're talking about precious metals. I've been remiss. I should mention that gold's down 650 the ounce to right around 1315. Silver down 11 cents, 1540 for what it's worth. Whether that's a, a, a Mueller bump or dump, I don't know. But, uh, but you know, it's so hard because there's so many trends and factors going on that none of us really can comprehend. Maybe the Fed knows it all because they get the best information out there. But who knows what's going to happen? So... I don't want to ask you for a dollar amount or anything like that, but Chris, if you had to guess a year from now, precious metals, what range? Ooh, that's a tough call. Um, to be of, honest, yeah. I actually have a feeling gold could be lower than where we are. I think we could be down below the thousand dollar mark a year from now. And that is based on more or less the equities markets rolling over here, selling off, entering a bear market, and everything gets pulled down with it, like we saw in two thousand and eight. And the real, the real big question mark, in my opinion, is: is there going to be some wild card that uh, sends gold through the roof or precious metals? Is there going to be a country or countries using gold as a, a backing for a currency? Um, you know, there, there's so many, I think, wild cards kind of out there floating globally that could potentially make precious metals or gold um, a safe haven that actually will hold up during a market crash. So um, I'm, I think, looking forward later this year, gold is up above 14, maybe up 15, 16. But when we do enter a bear market, I have a bad feeling it's uh, it's actually going to be lower. And uh, a year or two from now could be an incredible opportunity when, um, when I think the markets or gold has some major factor that turns it around and we see a leg uh, and a rally in gold. We've we'd never, you know, you can't even comprehend. It could be huge uh, based on some type of maybe gold back currency and other things that fall into play. That's interesting. That's a semi-contrarian opinion. Nobody out there is looking at sub thousand dollar gold but you and uh, for that reason really need to pay attention to the possibility david i'm going to throw the question at you a year from now just a range like and i don't expect you to be right i don't think any of you out there expect any of us to be right because nobody has been i just remember when uh, gold took off right after the crash it's a couple months i was loading up at that point and boom, all of a sudden it took off. What's your take on it a year from now, David? Yeah, they will be higher. I mean, I'm looking for the you know first resistance or actually psychological point was around 1300. Mm -hmm. We broke through that, and I thought it'd hold. I was wrong. It broke down through that level. It's gonna. It's testing it now back and forth a couple of times. I'll probably look at it two or three times. I think we'll break 1350, 1360 this year. If that happens, 
then I have a slightly different take than Chris, and I won't rule it out because, believe me, the market's humbled me many times in my life. And he's right. If we have a big crash in the stock market, gold goes with it initially because it's such a leveraged investment. But coming back on point, I think we'll see the above 1350 by the end of this year in gold. And I think we're going to, you know, work our way higher from there. But I cannot rule out, you know, a massive sell off and everything goes in the tank for a while. Yeah, I don't see, you know, the thousand dollar level and not to correct you, carry, but, you know, Martin Armstrong and a few others are of the mindset that, um, you know, we have one more major washout in the gold market. And maybe it's my bias of being so uh, pro the metals that I don't want to acknowledge it. I won't, first of all, I'll publicly say it could happen. So let me just be straight about that. Uh, I don't see it. But then again, if we got below 1280, as I said earlier, and the gold silver ratio is still above 80, I would have to tell everybody what the market is saying. The market's saying we're going right. lower. So I've got my eyes open. Fascinating. Fascinating. And last question is, uh, assuming it's going up and it's going to do this over a period of time, uh, David, best way to play an advancing precious metals market? All right. I'm going to try to keep it from being long-winded. <laughs> First and foremost, you have to have physical metal. And that's not yeah. going to give you the best leverage. The best thing from there is to have a balanced portfolio of top tier, mid tier and speculative situations. And then at the tippy top, when this thing really accelerates, it starts to go parabolic or double parabolic. That's when you want to get any stupid, stinking, lousy penny stocks that go from <laughs> four cents to 40 cents in a couple of weeks. And I may play yeah. that part of the market. I may not. It depends on my mood, my energy level and uh, cantankerous I am at the time. But I do have the URL so speculator i might uh, offer an additional service at that time for people that really know what they're doing and i would have a terms of condition where you'd actually have to talk to me before you could get into that kind of a right. uh, trading mechanism because it's extremely difficult but extremely lucrative so that's how i see it i think at the end we're going to have the biggest bull leg up we're going to see that five thousand dollar goal maybe six seven ten who knows it's going to be crazy and you're going to have to know what you're doing because a lot of people are going to take the ride up and they're going to do a U-turn, and they're going to write most of it back down. And that's unfortunate. That's why I wrote the third book with David Smith called Second Chance. So you do not make that mistake. And great, great uh, insight there. Chris, so you're seeing it going up. How do you play it? I know that your views as a trader is a lot different than uh, perhaps David's or my own. Well, uh, David, David pretty much nailed it. I mean, if you're going for maximum gains, uh, that's pretty much how you would do it. I'm a firm believer you got to have physical metals. I've been accumulating phys physical metals since 2013, and I I love having physical metals. I think it's it's the only true asset. Like, I mean, there's some great ETFs you can buy. You know, GLD and 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 two and three times leverage gold and silver ETFs along with miners. But I mean, we've seen ETFs implode. And, and vanish? Are they really holding physical gold? You might ride it up in GLD and find out there is no gold backing it, and then it vanishes. I, I really just don't trust the financial markets for large sums of money. I think it's great uh, for trading, but I mean, if you've got long-term investment capital and you want to make sure you've you've got the asset you do have to own a bunch of physical. So that to me is the best play. And pretty much you you can trade the leveraged ETFs in, in miners. And when it's a giant feeding frenzy and everyone wants to buy gold yeah. miners, just like they all wanted to buy Bitcoin a year and a half ago, um, you know, it's on the radio. That's when you want to do these penny stocks. And it's ridiculous. It's just a total gamble, but it, they can have massive moves, you know, five, six, 700% moves in, in a week. So um, pretty much David nailed it. I would definitely accumulate some physical metals, but silver, gold, both of them. I like them both. And um, that's your real insurance uh, in case there is some type of major market meltdown and scam going on when it comes to gold and silver. At least you've got your hands on some. And if the price takes off, at least it's worth a lot uh, to counter anything else you have. Hey, and it's so funny when you were saying that it reminded me of a saying from uh, Benjamin Graham the originator of tech of really fundamental security analysis. And he said, when the boot black, which means the shoe shine person 
boy in those days, or the elevator operator starts giving you stock tips, probably time to get out of the market. We could update that a little because there are no more elevator operators and except in a very, very few instances like service entrances of buildings and such. So we could say when the, uh, when the yoga instructor or the Zumba teacher starts telling you about cryptocurrencies or, yeah. or other things, it's time to head for the exits. And we got to head for the exits as well. Our time is up, but find David's work over at themorganreport.com and Chris, the golden oil guy.com. Where else uh, do we find you? Uh, the technical traders.com. All right. Thought so. And uh, both of them must readings, uh, there's an article today on Chris's site about uh, interest rates. I think it will help give you some insights into where this is all heading. David's got an article on it coming out as well. Gentlemen, really appreciate your joining me today. Good luck, and let's see what happens next. Thanks, Gary. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Gary, and thank you, Chris. Hello, I'm David Morgan, publisher of The Morgan Report, and as some of you may already know, The Morgan Report is about money, metals, and mining. In fact, we cover all resources, from rare earth elements to precious metals. I've been publishing on the internet for about 20 years. My primary passion is to help people build and preserve their wealth. I love to make people millionaires. I've helped thousands of people via our research in the Morgan Report, which has thousands of paid members and 10 times that amount on our free weekly updates. Here's what you'll receive from our free newsletter. To the point webinars, weekly analysis of the financial markets, interviews and our conference schedule, special reports such as riches and resources and various metals price forecasts. Our paid service client base is primarily small to medium-sized business owners, professionals in the industry, or the seasoned investor who understands markets and the value of precious metals. My area of expertise includes equity analysis throughout the resource sector, energy metals, base metals. We cover startups to billion dollar corporations. We focus on a special sector that makes money regardless of price oscillations and the importance of precious metals due to the ongoing currency devaluations. Our team of three analysts and support staff can help you build and protect your wealth. It's important for you to know what other people have said. We're passionate about what we do. High integrity and trust. Tell the truth and own it. If you're wrong, we admit it. Take a long-term outlook with major assets and bet a little to win a lot with speculative situations. If you choose to become a client, you will gain financial insights very few, even professionals, recognize. You'll understand the importance of honesty in our financial system. You will understand how the money system influences almost everything in your life. You'll be prepared for the ongoing currency crisis. And finally, I've chosen to make my life's mission greater than the individual, which means my mission statement is to teach and empower people to understand the benefits of an honest monetary and financial system. It's been a great journey so far and the best gains in the sector lie ahead over the next three to five years. I'm fortunate to have earned the status of being a leading authority in my field in helping others protect their wealth. You can email me at support at themorganreport.com or call my office at 480 325-0230.